Hello and welcome to this video. Today we're talking about vulnerability and masculinity. Two things that might seem like they clash or are antagonistic to one another, but which I have come to understand are very, very complementary and go very, very well together. Um, there's a, a type of masculinity that I think is celebrated in our culture and that we accept as masculinity sometimes that um, expresses itself as invulnerability and it expresses itself as being emotionally disconnected and um, there's it's a kind of confidence that comes from stoicism that comes from having a wall up and not being in touch with your rawness or your tenderness or your vulnerability and it's a kind of confidence that I'm familiar with. 10 or 15 years ago, that was kind of how I more or less moved through the world and experienced a sense of confidence in relationships. I um, would I, I, like often, often disconnect from painful, awkward, vulnerable, shameful, insecure feelings. And on the surface, it appeared as though I was just like a very steady, stoic, strong, confident person. Um, and in a sense, I was. And in a sense, that was an easy way to move through the world. However, underneath that um, protective armor or facade was all of this insecurity and all of these painful feelings, all of this awkwardness tenderness, honesty, and vulnerability that I was out of contact with. And, and being out of touch with that meant that the confidence I did have was built on a pretty shaky foundation. It meant that I was not a truly authentic person in a certain sense, because there was these extremely vital parts of myself, which I had disowned. Um, because it felt so scary to, to feel them, let alone share them and embody them in the world. I had the great fortune of stumbling into this process of disassembling that armor, that protective mask, um, that stoic way of being and feeling into the feelings I disowned, those parts of myself that were squirming, awkward, vulnerable, painful, insecure, um, overwhelmed, all of these parts of me that, um, that I didn't know how to incorporate into my persona. I didn't know I hadn't incorporated into my relationships, let alone really felt into just on my own. Um, and what I've discovered over many years of like slowly learning how to feel into those feelings and and own the the very awkward, trembling, afraid, honest, deeply emotive parts of myself, I've learned that um, oftentimes when I do share those, th there's like another form of masculinity that doesn't involve disowning all those painful, awkward, tender feelings, but it involves going into them, feeling them very honestly, and then sometimes through incredibly awkward, embarrassing, strained, trembling words, giving a voice to those feelings. And in doing that, kind of doing one of the most courageous things a person can do. Hypothetically, there, there are, you know, maybe more courageous things than just feeling your feelings and sharing them. But when you really, really do that, and a person can see how difficult it is for you to feel into some raw, honest feelings, and you do it and you share it, even though it's trembling and it's painful and it's vulnerable, that is an incredibly strong, courageous action. And that's a form of masculinity, a form of strength and expressiveness that comes through feeling the vulnerable parts 
the tender parts, the insecure and painful or, or shameful parts. And, um, and then having the bravery and courage to own them and to be so strong that you can describe your weakness, so strong that you can describe what you're not capable of, the things that you lack or the things that you desire or the things that you feel uncomfortable with or conflicted by. Um, learning how to feel that squirmy stuff and then embody it and share it is a whole other level of masculinity or confidence or expressiveness that um, can be really scary and it can actually require disassembling that other more performative or inauthentic type of masculinity. And for my own self, I know that the process of like disassembling that old way of being confident, um, that old way of having a mask up of disowning squirming feelings and just being like, oh, I'm okay, I'm okay. And it being inauthentic, it being a lie. Um, taking that apart, for me, it's like I disassembled my sense of confidence and my sense of self. And that's a difficult thing to do. Um, but it feels like over the last many years, through learning to feel complex emotions and then learning how to express them in a healthy way, um, it's like I've been slowly learning how to rebuild a sense of confidence from this other foundation. This other foundation being honesty and authenticity and truth. I guess those are all words for the same thing. <laughs> building that from a foundation of truth and emotional realness. Um, it feels so much better. And when I do that, when I bring that into interactions, when I share difficult things, even if it comes across in a way that's like trembling and visibly strained and awkward and weak, um, what I notice is that it makes me a stronger person and it makes the people around me often not always feel a sense of respect for the courage to share so honestly and to feel that that truth inside and uh and have the bravery to speak it out loud you know to say the things like that doesn't feel good to me um to say uh, you know, this makes me feel bad, this makes me feel sad, this makes me, you know, this doesn't make any logical sense, but I have to be honest that a part of me feels really uncomfortable right now. Um, or whatever it is, like, the, or it could be complimentary things, you know, it, this, this is really hard for me to say, but I really like you and appreciate you. Uh, or this is really hard for me to say, but it feels like there's a wall up between us. And I really want to connect beyond that or this is really hard for me to say but I feel like I made a re I've messed up in the way that I've interacted with you whatever it is um my experience has overwhelmingly been that learning how to be vulnerable and authentic and feel complex emotions and say them out loud with others has been a pathway to this other um experience of confidence that I'm still in process with because I have like through it I did like deconstruct um, <laughs> a sense of um, confidence as a person through taking apart my armor and stoicism and masks there was like uh, a blow to my sense of self for sure in that but it's so worth it it's so worth it to go for a, this deeper, more honest way of being in the world, even though it can be very, very difficult at times. Although masculinity is often associated with being stoic, with being unemotional, with not sharing weakness, but having a strong front of like simple monochromatic <laughs> strength, um, I've found that by owning 
my vulnerability, owning my weaknesses and giving them a voice and sharing them. There's something so enlivening about that. There's something that it creates this like pure kind of confidence when I can just say to others, oh, I feel so insecure about this. Oh yeah, I feel so ashamed about that. I feel, oh yeah, I'm not very good at this. Oh yeah, I really messed up at that. Like owning my weaknesses I've found is a form of liberation. It just changes the, all of the emotions and heaviness and shame around that. When I can share it out loud, it's like it normalizes it. It's like some part of me gets to be like, oh, I don't have to pretend anymore. I can stop like clenching that muscle that just so needed to relax and be fluid and natural. And in that is uh, such a deeper sense of naturalness and confidence. And, uh, and it, it gives permission to the people around us to also relax and feel natural in being themselves. It's pretty, it's pretty extraordinary. <laughs> so uh, that's all I wanted to share today. This is obviously a topic that one could go uh, quite a bit longer talking about. And it's also a subject that my entire book, How to Open the Heart, is basically a case study in. It's just my personal story um, of unraveling this mystery of vulnerability. If you're interested in checking it out, there's a link in the description down below the video. If you enjoyed the video, um, give it a like, give it a comment, subscribe to the channel, or just feel good because you like the video. In any case, I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time.